Hi. Welcome to a brand new series of videos on the Raspberry Pi. This is the first episode of the series and like anything new, it is fitting to start off with an introduction. In this video, we will talk about the Raspberry Pi or simply the Pi, what it is, how many Pis there are and what makes them special. We will also take a high level look of a general Pi board and what you can do with it. Let's go. You must have read or heard that the Pi is an SBC. Well, what is an SBC? SBC stands for single board computer. But what is a single board computer you say? Let us first understand a typical computer. A typical CPU tower looks something like this. You have a power supply unit that powers the entire CPU tower. There is a motherboard that houses the graphics card, the CPU chip, the RAM, the IO ports and the storage. So how does the Raspberry Pi do all of this? Well, it does all of this on a single board. You have the micro SD card being the storage part of it and the rest of the components like the IO, the RAM, CPU chip, graphics, etc. are all available on a single board. And this board is almost as small as a credit card. Isn't it fantastic? Come, let's know more about this board. The Raspberry Pi is designed, maintained and funded by a non-profit called the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It is the non-profit nature of this organization that allows the boards to remain affordable and hence immensely popular in the community. Most of the boards today are manufactured out of a Sony factory based in the United Kingdom. Sony proudly supports this initiative and has also invested millions of dollars in the last few years to ramp up the production of these boards as the demand has skyrocketed. Some of these boards are also manufactured at several locations in Japan, China and Taiwan. As of the end of 2019, more than 30 million or more than 3 crore Raspberry Pi boards have been sold. That is a huge number and the COVID-19 pandemic has only accelerated the demand for the Pi. As a lot of people have embraced the extra time saved from the daily commute as well as to make things for their homes and for their family. Raspberry Pi sees users from all kinds of backgrounds, electronics engineers, software engineers, tinkerers and makers, students, hobbyists, movie makers, photographers, etc. are just a few examples of people who have made fun stuff and shared it with everyone. What have you made or what will you make? Please let us know in the comment box below. Now, let's take a look at the various models of Pi that have been sold more than 30 million times across the globe. Raspberry Pi's journey started in 2012 with the launch of the Raspberry Pi Model B. In 2013, they launched the Raspberry Pi Model A. In 2014, with growing popularity, two Raspberry Pis were launched, the Model B Plus and the Model A Plus, which were basically size and memory variants. In 2015, the Raspberry Pi 2 came around, which was a new generation of products altogether. In the same year, the Raspberry Pi Zero was launched, which is still as popular as ever. By 2015, the Pi had developed a cult following in the open source community and the contributions and applications started increasing every day. 2016 saw the arrival of the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, which was again a new generation of the Raspberry Pi series. This was followed by the Raspberry Pi Zero W in 2017, which was everything that Raspberry Pi Zero was, but also supported wireless communications. In 2018, the world welcomed Raspberry Pi 3 models B Plus and A Plus, which have gone on to become some of the highest sold Raspberry Pis as of now. Until 2018, the maximum RAM available in these products was never more than 1 gigabytes 
and this was seen to be a limitation to implement complex algorithms as required in AI and ML applications as well as some image processing applications. 2019 was a breakout year for the Raspberry Pi series as the RAM on the products was now increased all the way up to 4 GB. A lot of companies and engineers took interest in these products and almost all memory variants of the Raspberry Pi 4 sold like hotcakes and they still do. As an endorsement of the increased computing power on the Pi, 2020 saw an introduction of the Raspberry Pi model 400 which is basically a computer in the form factor of a keyboard. You just need to plug in a mouse and a monitor and you're good to go. 2021 again will go down as a landmark year for the Raspberry Pi series as they introduced an all new kind of product. The Raspberry Pi Pico, a board based on a processor designed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation themselves. So far, all the products were based on high-end chipsets, but not the Pico. It is based on RP2040, a dual-core Cortex-M0 SoC designed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation themselves. It is also why Pico is the smallest board in the entire series. The other boards have a standard, compact and zero form factor, but Pico is the smallest of them all. We are all extremely proud of the Raspberry Pi Foundation and would love to see where they go from here. So is it a goodbye to Broadcom chipset based boards and a welcome to Raspberry Pi's own silicon boards? What do you think? Do let us know in the comment box below. Let us now understand the main parts of a typical Raspberry Pi board. And we don't mean the Pico here. You have a micro SD slot into which you insert the micro SD with the Raspberry Pi image flashed onto it. We recommend to use a micro USB power supply which is able to at least deliver 2 amperes of current continuously. Next, you need a monitor which can connect to the board over HDMI or a mini HDMI port. If your monitor does not support HDMI, you can go for an HDMI to VGA or an HDMI to DVI adapter as well. Next, you have the I.O. for sound as well as USB for connecting the mouse and the keyboard. There is an RJ45 Ethernet connector on board for wired connectivity. However, some boards have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well on them, so you may not always need the Ethernet. Finally, you have the Raspberry Pi 40 pin GPIO connector. Let us take a deeper look at this connector as you will end up using this at some point of time during your development. This is the mapping of the IO pins which are brought out on the 40 pin connector. You have primarily three broad categories of IO. Power, communication and sound. All the pins other than power can also be used as general purpose IO. You have the SPI, I2C and UART which are very commonly used in embedded systems. You also have a couple of PWM pins which can be used to drive motors or some other actuators. Unfortunately, as of today the Raspberry Pi boards don't have a hardware ADC on them but the Raspberry Pi Pico changes that. That's it, that was the end of this introduction to the world of Raspberry Pi. What did you think of this? Do let us know your feedback in the comment box below. See you soon with a brand new video about the world's favorite computer. Bye.